The Stardew Valley 1.5 update introduced the forge, and with it a number of enchants that give tools and weapons powerful and interesting mechanics. Do you have a favourite enchant that you want on your favourite weapon or tool, but you just can't seem to get it? Let's dig in and see the mechanics behind this. Hi, I'm Blade. I explore the source code of Stardew and push the game to its limits. First up, to understand enchants we need to understand RNG and RNG progression. RNG stands for Random Number Generator. When the game enchants a tool or weapon, it creates an RNG object, which returns a number between 0 and 1. This number is used to choose an enchant out of all possible enchants. If we know how this RNG is created and used, we can predict future RNG rolls. I will get to specifics soon. Next, the enchants. Each type of tool has its own list of possible enchants. These are in a set order. The placement of an enchant in the list determines what RNG number is needed to get that enchant. Upgrading a hoe or a watering can to iridium unlocks the reaching enchant. Finally, the previous two enchants on a tool or weapon are removed from the enchant list. This adjusts the numbers of the remaining enchants. With me so far? When RNG is seeded for enchants, it uses a unique game seed and the total number of enchants previously done on the save. So think of the next enchant as having an RNG seed of plus one. Adding one to the RNG seed adds 0.5224253141893 to the result of subsequent enchants, throwing away whole numbers. How about an example? Your name is Habu and you are doing a perfection speedrun and you are after the following enchants. Artful on Hammer, Crusader on Dagger, Archaeologist on Ho, Preserving on Fishing Rod, Powerful on Axe, and Powerful on Pickaxe. Through some shenanigans, we know that the result of the first enchant is between 0.1003 and 0.1103. For simplicity, we will assume 0.1003. We put the club in first. 0.1003 matches Artful. The second enchant gives a result of 0.228. If we had the fishing rod, we could put it in for preserving. If we don't have it yet, we put in the axe for efficient as a placeholder. The third enchant gives the result of 0.1452. We put in the hoe to manip for archaeologists later. Fourth is 0.6676 which gives Crusader on the dagger. Fifth is 0 0.1900. This would normally give Generous, but since our hoe already has Generous on it, a reshuffled list gives us Archaeologist. Sixth is 0 0.7125, which gives Preserving on a fishing rod. Seventh is 0 0.2349, Powerful on the axe. 8th is 0 0.7573. We don't have a good use for this one, so we just throw it on the pickaxe. 9th is 0 0.2797. This puts powerful on the pickaxe, and we have what we want. If you are trying to work out your own progression, it is useful to note that restarting the day and enchanting again will give the same RNG results. This can give you an idea of what you need to enchant and when. I mentioned before that with some shenanigans, I knew what the result of the first enchant was. Those shenanigans is the location of golden crops. The RNG that controls golden crops is similar to enchants. This too uses the unique game seed, but it also uses the day and tile location. If the RNG is under a certain number, then the crop is gold. 
This number changes based on farming level and fertilizer type. The most precise result we can get is at level 0 farming, where the number is 0.01, or 1%. By noting what tile location is gold when, we can use the difference in the RNG seed to know what number is used for the first enchant. In Habu's example from before, in order to get the enchant line we are after, the first enchant had to be between 0 and 0 0.198. I built this crop grid to plant the first 15 parsnips on, which gives a 17% chance of hitting a golden parsnip. By resetting until a golden parsnip appeared, the randomness of enchanting was removed. So there you have it. You now know about the progression of RNG for enchanting. If you like exploring in-depth mechanics of Stardew, make sure to subscribe, or come find me on Twitch. I plan on doing more videos like this and showing off this knowledge in my own crazy challenges. Thanks for watching.